need a hammer for this part. We'll go ahead and start the uh, current council of government's workshop, truck climbing lanes on eastbound Highway 58 by Caltrans. Good evening. Um, can you hear me? Great. Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me here in Caltrans. My name is Brian Wessling. I'm a senior um, transportation engineer um, for Caltrans in District 9, which is in Bishop. And I'm here to present to you a project that we are planning right now. We're writing a um, project initiation document for it. And um, it's for eastbound truck climbing lanes on Kern 58, coming up out of the valley. So like I said, we're, we, we are currently writing a project initiation document. Technically, it's going to be a PSR, PDS, to program support component for um, PA and ED, the environmental phase. And what we're doing right now is just really trying to put, put a finer point on the scope of a project, where the deficiencies are on the route, um, what some of the volumes are, what the technical constraints are, the physical constraints, the geophysical constraints, and whatnot. Um, really, what we're trying to do is develop a cost, scope, and schedule for for this project. Um, currently, funding is not identified, and um, we're looking at three locations. Um, one would be right pretty much at the valley floor, the next just up from um, uh, Baleville Road, and then another one um, right by the Tehachapi Loop. The, the current plan is to write the planning document for all three locations, do the environmental clearance for all three locations, and phase the project phase the, as construction capital funding becomes available. So in, in terms of the need for this project, um, as everyone here knows, um, Interstate 40, um, US 58 is a route of significant, significant interregional um, uh, uh, truck traffic um, commerce. It is the fourth, has the fourth highest um, average annual truck traffic interstate leaving California of any route in California. So, um, you know, including I-80 at the Nevada border, um, Interstate 40 has a higher um, truck count at the Nevada, at the um, Nevada border, Arizona border. Yeah. So only Interstate 10, 15, and 5 have higher um, truck counts at the border. There's definitely going to be, um, there's projected to be increased um, truck traffic caused by growth in the Central Valley, um, the Centennial Corridor, um, uh, agricultural exports, uh, distribution centers popping up in Shafter and other communities. Um, and of course, increased exports of manufactured goods from the uh, Central Valley. So really, if, if anyone's driven eastbound uh, on that route, you know what the issue is. There's only two lanes. Um, the trucks, they can't negotiate that grade. Um, in one section, it's a 6% grade. Um, I've seen trucks slow down to eight miles an hour, and I don't drive that section of highway very frequently. You've probably seen them nearly stopped. Um, the big issue is when another truck goes to pass a slow-moving truck um, in the number one lane, then backup occurs, and the level of service goes down for the whole route. So in looking at the location, what we've done is we've um, We've drawn, we've taken the as-built plans for the whole route from the valley floor to the Tehachapi summit. And we've, we've looked at that to determine where the steepest locations are. Then we went out to the field and we, we just verified that everything that we saw on paper indeed was reflected in, in the route, and, and it was. Um, we met, so we, we came up with some preliminary locations. Um, we, met, we met with the city of Tehachapi, um, Kern County, regarding um, to get to get some feedback, 
um, with Aaron as well. And um, we made some minor adjustments, but these are the locations that, that we um, discovered had the highest need um, for a truck climbing lane. Um, I guess starting with the, the worst location, it would be location two, um, just I inclusive of Baleville Road and um, ending at that little sub summit there, uh, just to the, the west of Hart Flat. Um, that section actually has um, about a mile of 6% grade, but on average, the grade is about 5%. But on average, it has the steepest slope of any um, segment of uh, Kern 58. The second um, most critical location is down more towards the valley floor. Um, we call that location one. And um, it has an average grade of about 4.4%, but it does go up to 5%. And that covers about 2.6 miles. We've included a third location in here. Um, we're, we're gonna have to complete some additional studies to make sure this location is, is truly warranted. Um, but we identified it roughly where the grade changes to about 4%. Um, about a mile to the west of Broom Road, and then ending uh, to the west at that little sub-summit. So getting into the locations themselves, this is location one. This is the one closest to the valley floor. Um, some of the challenges involved in, in building a truck climbing lane at, at this location would be um, the large cuts and fills. Um, some of the fills extend for about 160 feet down, um, down the slope. So there's gonna be a lot of earthwork. We're gonna have to um, reestablish the, the ranch roads, the fire break roads. Um, there's some utilities out there. Um, staging is an issue and um, staging for the contractor. Um, and there's a lot of right-of-way that we, we would need, but likely only from one owner, and that would be the um, Tahone Ranch. Tahone Ranch, is that it? Um, we would have to replace the bridge over Banner Road. Um, and then if we take this improvement all the way to the sub-summit, um, we would have to actually relocate Banner Road where, where it's in that cut slope there at the top. Um, in terms of the engineering, this would probably be the easiest and it has the, the, the least amount of engineering problems. Location two is significantly different than location one. Um, this would be one of the more challenging locations, um, but I think there's some things that we can do to mitigate the challenges. For instance, um, those cut slopes that you see there in that Google Earth imagery, the benched cut slopes, um, the proposal would be to not offset those benches back into the hillside to go all the way to the top of the hill and disturb all that land and property. There's houses up there and roads. Um, we would, were initially proposing borrowing two of the benches to get the extra 22 feet of width that we would need. Um, currently, those slopes are stable, there's not evidence of major erosion or even really minor erosion. Um, and they're, they're geologically stable as well, from, from what I could tell at this point. Um, so that, that would mitigate, d doing something like that would mitigate a lot of the impacts um, that this improvements to this location would have. Um, some of the issues, some of the more challenging issues um, to construct this location, would be the uh, intersection of Baleville Road. Um, we don't know exactly what we would propose as a treatment, but likely we, we would terminate it so it wouldn't cross 58, but those details all need to be worked out. Uh, some of the other impacts that we know that we would have here on this, this segment would be um, impacts to old growth um, uh, oak trees. And of course, there's a large need for right of way, especially for the fills, not so much for the cuts, but for the fills. Um, I estimate about 30 parcels, private parcels, we would need to um, acquire. Okay, location three. This is the location that um, 
the, high, the highway is not as steep as it is at location two and location one. So this is up more towards the top of the grade. In the picture, the Google Earth imagery there, you can see the uh, Tehachapi Loop, so that gives you an idea of, of where this is. Um, this, this location would be probably the most difficult to construct. Um, one, of the, the, one of the major issues for this location is that there's not a lot of opportunity to generate cut to generate embankment um, the majority of this improvement would consist of fills um, so there's an earthwork imbalance um, so that's 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 an issue um, also there would be right off the bat we know we would need a lot of retaining walls to build this um, especially down by the railroad where the railroad really impinges upon the state right of way um, at the bottom you know, we could move the, the beginning um, up a little bit more to, to bypass that impact. Um, but right now, we know we, we're going to need retaining walls even at the top where we um, drop the lane and merge the trucks back into the number two lane. Of course, we would need a new bridge at Broom Road to accommodate that extra width. Right now, we estimate this to cost about 40 million, but that's a really, really rough estimate. Okay, so those are basically the three phases of the project that, that we're looking at right now. Um, we're also developing alternatives, and the first alternative would be what we call fewer retaining walls. Um, trying to ac accomplish the, wi the, the widening with as many cuts and fills as possible and not have to have walls. Um, alternative two, we're, we're defining as basically having more retaining walls um, to really minimize the impacts to the adjacent landowners, um, to minimize the impacts to uh, sensitive environmental um, resources. These retaining walls, though, in a situation like this, are very hard to construct. And um, where to put traffic um, in the construction zone while we provide contractor access to that um, is a problem that we haven't solved. Um, it would likely involve temporary shoring and temporary temporary retaining walls, which are really costly. So we're, look, we're doing an, ec an economic analysis right now to see where the breakpoint is between it being economically more viable to have retaining walls rather than a fill. You know, is, the, is, it, is it at 100 feet? Is it 110 feet? We don't know, but we're gonna find out. But basically, those are, those are the, that's the differentiation between the alternatives. Um, the layout of the highway, um, where the lane drops would be, where the, the truck climbing lanes start would be identical for, for either alternative. Um, so it's, it's almost more like a design option, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna proceed with it um, as an alternative. So, costs. Like I said before, these costs are very, very preliminary, and this is just capital construction cost with no right-of-way component thrown in there or no mitigation, environmental mitigation. Location one, down towards the valley floor, we're, we've estimated at about $32 million. Um, location number two, about $33 million. And location four, about $40 million. And that location four is more expensive because of that earthwork imbalance and the need for additional retaining walls. And these costs are just for alternative one. Um, we haven't even calculated what alternative two would cost. That's all I had in my presentation. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Smith. Good evening. As most people know, this is a project near and dear to my heart for the last, since I've been on here, uh, quite a while. Uh, but it's also a project that affects and impacts the entire region. Mm -hmm. It's not just for folks who live in Tehachapi, it's for trucking and all the freight movements east and west. One of the questions I had was uh, uh, the preliminary estimates. You said a replacement of the bridge for Bina 
that wouldn't be in the thirty two million. That's not it that's not in the in the estimate. So at that this point. would be Do by itself maybe thirty million. Um I'm thinking maybe more around eight, but I, I don't know. Oh. A bargain basement it's, bridge. It's a relatively <laughs> we'll take it. Well, <laughs> it's a relatively simple bridge. Okay. We we recently um got a cost estimate for our bridges going in on the Atlanta Cartago project mm -hmm. and they went from about 2.3 million to about 4.6 million um, th that's for two bridges for, really? for, the, for the state highway um, so I think 8 to 10 would be about ballpark what what that bridge would cost but y yes you're right that's not factored into this cost estimate. so broom road overpass would be the same similar correct c uh, cost i just threw that number out there because of denison road overpass <coughs> went from six million dollar estimated 20 years ago when we were planning it to over 20 million today so yeah but that's with an interchange so it does throw a, l a little bit more this that lends itself to being at least more viable on this project if it's only eight million dollars I, I would so. think so yes. okay uh, the other question I had was uh, um, the the second segment is the one where I think most people notice the most it's the steepest grade with the most turns and uh, or most curves and that's where you really see the backup number one location one is probably ended the distance in each location that you're having to traverse so uh, but that was my question on the bridges so those would be a additional costs correct then the other one was you mentioned at uh, Bealeville Road uh, and from Kramer Junction to uh, Bealeville Road or General Beal it's it's highway it's not it's not interstate because you have at grade crossings at California City where it correct California City Boulevard which may be in the works to be rectified that it's at grade that is an interchange pardon That's me our, isn't Cal City a ramp the boulevard the boulevard. the entrance to Edwards Air Force Base oh, 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 is oh, an overpass yeah. um, and I know there's yes. in the works to have a frontage road to right. get that at grade crossing right taken off at Cal City or Boulevard. You have the same s situation at uh, Bealeville Road, which is at grade. Are you looking at the situation where at 223, which is in segment two, you'll see up here Route 223, there's the large in or uh, uh, grade that goes actually downhill, heading toward east toward 223. And there was, I've seen studies of somehow putting a frontage road from Bealeville to 20, 223 and making 223 separation of grade. Is Bealeville Road and that hiccup that you've got or that obstacle you've got, what, how to deal with that, that at grade crossing, what do you do with that intersection? Are you looking at getting some money from the VA or something with the Veterans uh, Cemetery? that we could use to offset or go into this project and mitigate that issue where you could uh, uh, bring traffic from Bealeville Road, I'm not sure how many miles that is, to or such frontage road to bring it over to 223. Have you looked at that? I haven't, but that, that would be a good question for Ryan. Oh, nice diversion. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <coughs> um, we are looking at that, yes, definitely. And, and I want to tell everybody, I know we don't have any funding identified for construction or design or right away at this point in time, but this is a great candidate for the Trade Corridor Enhancement Program, which is a, an SB1 program under the, the new SB1 parameters. And I think, as you saw with Brian showing how, that, how high of a priority this facility is in the state, I, I think putting our heads together and working together, this will be a, a great opportunity and a great project to really put forward, and I think it will have a great chance of getting funded and we do need to look at that at grade in this study and make sure we address that so because you could solve two problems uh, at the National Cemetery because of the volume of, of services that's going up at that location uh, and then you've got just a mile or so away the Bealeville at grade crossing uh, 
then we're talking about bringing Highway 58 up to interstate standards if you can eliminate Cal City Boulevard and Bealeville Road. I think those are the last two. I think those are the last two at grade crossings, which keeps it as a highway status. Right. So just throwing those things out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Philip. Yes. Or oh. Bob over here on this side. <coughs> um, if I may, um, I know that this is for truck climbing. One of the things that I've seen in the past isn't so much not only issues with driving or trying to maneuver around trucks that are slower as they're hitting <coughs> east, uh, eastbound. But a few months ago, we were coming back from Vegas. Um, it was a truck on fire coming down the hill hmm. because obviously there's no uh, uh, runaway ramps. There's no um, other safety mechanisms for them. So they're slamming their brakes or they're, they're, they're burning their brakes on the way down. Would this be an opportunity as well? Or should this be the right time to ask or to include uh, at least one or, or a couple runaway ramps for... Um, for those trucks, if we're going to move in, especially with the with cost, if we're going to buy and if we're going to whenever we get the funding, if we're going to do it now or whenever we do it, it'd probably be more cost effective to do it then than waiting years later. And then the cost is greater then to also incorporate a safety measure on the opposite side, which would be on the way back down. It it would be a good time to to, to look at something like that, and certainly if. Um, if, if that were to move forward and um, be a part of one of these projects, one of these phases, um, having a construction contractor out there, having um, all of the equipment, maybe a mobile batch plant, a crushing plant, um, just the costs associated with the project development um, and the mobilization, it, it, it would make sense to do it all at, in, in yeah, one contract. I, agree. Um, I think we could look into that. Sure, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> great to see in the future. Thank you. Mr. Maggart. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Councilman Smith said about the 223 interchange and, and Bealeville. Uh, I'm at the cemetery relatively often, and it is a dicey turn to come back westbound there. Uh, so that it would be even more ominous with this extra lane in there. And then I guess it's Bealeville where uh, uh, it's a common place uh, where I, I've ridden my bike across the freeway there to drop down into, uh, into the other side, and uh, it's very ominous there too. So, just to reiterate what you were saying, it's uh, where was that second location? Could you repeat that, please? Uh, Bealville. Yeah, Bealeville, where it, it drops Bealville. down into okay. um, the, the little town that's down below there, you have to across the road tracks. Uh, but it's 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 dicey, and the the road dips a bit, so you can't see the the cars as they're coming until they're you know they're much much faster and particularly it's a common bicycle route so for what it's worth I, I just want to reiterate what you said thank you okay thank, thank you, you. yes so there is a third at grade crossing right now 223 is at grade correct okay Bealeville Road and Cal City Boulevard okay You mentioned in the beginning uh, you need local support. So what would next steps be and what can we do locally to help move it along? Again, uh, Ryan? <laughs> well, at first I want to say I appreciate all the comments tonight. It's exactly what we wanted to hear from all of you is some of those issues that you see out there and what's going on. Because we don't drive it every day. Some of you do. So thank you for that. Much appreciated. We're going to take that back and put it in the report. Um, going forward, Brian, you have a schedule. We think you're going to be done with this project initiation document like August September, September October somewhere in there realistically I was hoping more August but we'll, <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll chat um, anyway once that's done we will go shopping for funding and I believe that when I mentioned earlier trade quarter enhancement program there's gonna be new guidelines out this year for that so cycle two is coming out soon and I'm hoping we'll be teed up and ready to go and apply for that program what I'm gonna need from all of you is probably letters of support maybe not only from the cog but also from the various agencies within the cog the, the county cities whatever we can do to really you know get get some support behind this and show this is a really critical need um the trucks are coming there's only more trucks coming we need to do something about this so thank you yeah there's no question as you know our logistics center and employment grows that that truck route grows exponentially so appreciate the work thank you so we got a couple minutes till we start
Okay, we're going to start the Kern Council of Governments Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Garola. B. Smith. <coughs> I am here. Lucinovich. Present. Vallejo. Crump. Here. Cantu. Present. Maurer. Here. Cryer. Here. P. Smith. Here. Garcia. Present. Couch. Here. Maggard. Here. Kiernan. Miller? Here. Para? Here. Green? Dermody? Here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Item three, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making presentation. Any public comments? Good evening, Lieutenant Ian Silva with Kern County Sheriff's Office. Just want to give our uh, update on our activities in relation to our contract with Kern Cog regarding uh, litter removal. Um, in January, detention deputies worked about 150 hours towards keeping the county clean, uh, Kern's roads clean. Uh, when we add in the inmate laborer, that adds up to about 900 hours, which we estimate to be about $23,814 of savings to the county for those uh, work crew sites. Um, as for the fiscal year, we're about halfway through our current contract uh, period. And so far, our detention deputies worked 405 hours of, uh, of work, and our inmates, uh, 2,433 hours. And this we estimate as a savings of about $64,377 uh, using departmental crews as opposed to hiring out or doing some other kind of uh, cleanup oper oper uh, operations. Um, in the past month, we focused on areas in Delano, Shafter, McFarland, and Bakersfield. And of course, we'll be uh, accepting requests. I know every once in a while, members of the committee or public want to let us know about a certain area that we should focus on, and we try to arrange that whenever it's in our area of operation. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions the committee might have. Otherwise, that is all I have for this evening. Appreciate it. Any comments? Thank you. Thank we you. love your work. We love doing it. Thank you, sir. Okay, next is a consent agenda. Opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern-Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before action is taken. Does the committee or any public want anything taken off the consent agenda? Motion on consent. Second. Roll call or? Mm -hmm. Garola. B. Smith. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Crump. Yes. Cantu. Aye. Maurer. Aye. Cryer. Yes. P. Smith. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Couch. Yes. Maggard. Aye. Miller. Yes. Para. Yes. Dermody. Yes. Thank you. Item five, conformity analysis and amendment to the 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program. F tip by Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment number two to the 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program includes revisions to the State Highway Regional Choice Program, the State Highway Operations and Protection Program, Safety Program, and Transit Program. Of note, the Safety Program includes the newly approved Cycle 9 Highway Safety Improvement Program projects, 
for the cities of Arvin, Bakersfield, Delano, Tehachapi, and Wasco, as well as the County of Kern. As for the conformity analysis, this update covers the 2015 ozone conformity demonstration. In October of 2015, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, strengthened the eight-hour primary and secondary ozone standards. The San Joaquin Valley was classified as extreme non-attainment for the 2015 ozone standard, effective August 3rd of 2018. In addition, the eastern portion of Kern County, the Mojave Desert, was designated non-attainment and classified as moderate. Conformity for a given standard applies one year after the effective date, or in this case, August 3rd, 2019. The 2015 ozone conformity analysis will satisfy this requirement in advance of the deadline. Since the analysis addresses the new standard, all eight of the San Joaquin Valley Metropolitan Planning Organizations must demonstrate simultaneously in order to satisfy the EPA's multi-jurisdictional guidance requirements. The public review period began on January 7th and ends on February 5th. At this time, I ask for two actions. First, I ask that the chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. And second, after the close of the public hearing, the chair to continue the adoption of the final documents until February 21st. Thank, Thank you. you. Public hearing is open. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I close the public hearing uh, and continue the adoption of the final document until February 21st. With a so voice motion. vote. Yes, voice motion. motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Board members, meeting report none, Caltrans report. Okay, I have three pages. So follow along because I have a lot. Oh, I'm usually really loud. Uh, so we're going to start off with uh, those that are in construction. And so we've got Formoso. Uh, 4699, that's a bridge replacement. The east side of State Route 46 of the project will, st will start w on January 22nd, or the week of January 22nd, weather permitting. After that, the project will go in, I'm sorry, but it'll go into winter suspension. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> moving on to... to State Route 99 Taft Highway uh, <coughs> rehabilitation, pavement rehabilitation. That's near the city of Bakersfield from north of Herring Road over crossing to Pacheco Road under crossing. Excavation, subgrade preparation, and hot mix asphalt, rebar, concrete placement from State Route 223 or 223 off ramp to one mile south of uh, 223 over crossing. Work currently scheduled for the next 30 days, subject to weather. Uh, closure of lane number three, which is a trek lane, from just north of 223 off-ramp to just south of Union Avenue overcrossing. Removal of existing concrete subgrade preparation and HMA hot mix asphalt. Rebar concrete. Placement of approximately one mile south That'll happen one mile south of 223 overcrossing to just north of the Union Avenue overcrossing. Miscellaneous shoulder and punch lick work from Pacheco Road undercrossing to just north of Houghton uh, Road off ramp. Electrical loop installations at various ramps throughout the project limits. Possible planal replacements in a uh, lane that's adjacent to the tr truck lane. They're going to have traffic control. Um, and that's going to be all four lanes are, are open to traffic from Pacheco undercrossing to State Route 199 overcrossing. All three lanes are open to traffic from the 119 to just north of Houghton off a road off ramp. Two of three lanes are open from just north of Houghton Road off ramp to Union overcrossing. But there's going to be nightly nightly closures will be needed weekly. 
from Sunday to Thursday to complete work from Pacheco into crossing to just south of the Union over crossing. Concurrent, closers, concurrent closures will be spaced by five miles and restricted to one mile length. That was a lot. Um, now we've got State Route um, uh, 46, Segment 4A, and that's to widen from two to four lanes, and that's uh, between Lost Hills Road and um, I-5. Main Flood Canal Bridge is complete. Contractor is removing false work. Contractor continues uh, the I-5 bridge construction, and then continuous reinforced concrete pavement um, at, at 46, on 46. The other one that's in construction is um, pavement rehabilitation on 99, and it's um, 0.3 miles south of Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge, and then on 178 at route, it's at the 99 and 178 separation. Work currently scheduled for the next 30 days, subject to weather. Closure of lane one from south of Palm Avenue overcrossing to just north of the 204 overcrossing. Removal of existing northbound medium shoulder and subgrade preparation from just south of Palm Avenue overcrossing to just north of the 204 overcrossing. Possible panel replacements in lanes one and two from the Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge. There's going to be uh, related traffic control measures. Uh, there an extended closure of lane one, the fast lane, both northbound and southbound from Palm Avenue to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Nightly closures of uh, adjacent lanes will be needed weekly again from that'll their Sunday to Thursday on this one too. And then um, work from the work that I just talked about will happen from Pacheco under cro crossing to just south of the Union Avenue over crossing. They'll have uh, concurrent closures with a five mile spacing, but restricted uh, to five mile length. And then one more project in construction, Cottonwood um, East Rehab, and that is on State Route 58 in Bakersfield from Cottonwood Road under crossing to just east of the 58 and 184 separation. Medium work is complete. Contractors currently, um, oh, why would they put that in there? Contractors currently behind schedule. Oh, really? Okay, if I'd have seen that, I'd have taken that out. We don't want to talk about that yet. But, but approximately 40% complete. Um, and while contractors currently behind schedule, approximately 40% complete on work. While contract time is at 74%, contractor will be submitting, oh, but he's going to submit a plan on how he's going to make up this time and accelerate the construction to hit the completion date. So good news. Um, work is continuing on eastbound on the number, num, number three lane and shoulder. Okay. okay, and here's the good news. Mm -hmm. So with SB1 and all the work that we're going to have, I'm finally starting to get, you know, those projects out of the queue. So we're going to have Cash Creek Bridge replacement on 58. It's eight miles east of Tachapi from Sand Canyon overhead to 0.5 miles east of Cache Creek. It's a shop project. Bids opened um, on the 18th. Con uh, Caltrans is working on awarding the contract. So I should be starting to talk about that. That'll be going into construction probably in the next two or three months. And then the other one is the Summit over, Overhead Bridge Rails. So so you've got on the Summit Bridge, they're going to place replace the rails. That's on 58 near to Hatchby at Summit, at, at Summit Overhead. Starting of construction is next month. And then we've got Lerdo Canal Medium Gap Closure. Medium deck closure near Bakersfield at Lairdo Canal on 99. Start of construction is March. Bakersfield, a 5899 Bakersfield freeway connector. Modify the interchange in Bakersfield on State Route 58 from Real Road to 0.4 miles east of Hughes Lane, overcrossing 
and then also on State Route 99 between Ming Avenue and Palm Avenue. Um, and this, this, has an in, this one was awarded an infra grant. Start of construction is February. And then we've got the California Aqueduct. Um, that's a bridge overlay. And um, that's on I-5 and 99. It's a freight corridor improvement loading rate um, near the grapevine. This project has been awarded and approved construction contract is anticipated next month. We have the I-599 bridge separation. And this is for uh, vertical clearance on the bridge. And that's in Kern County near, near Wheeler Ridge at the 99 I-5 separation northbound. The project has been awarded and approval of construction contract is, should happen um, next month. The, this project is going to be combi combined with another project that's a pavement rehab in that area, and that's going to be on 99 from, well, the I-599 junction to Panama Lane overcrossing. And, okay, I'm done with that. Now, I have an update that didn't get to me till later, but she promised she'd get it to me, so I want to, <laughs> I'm going to read it to you from my phone, but it's another one. Oh, shoot. Come on, Gail. So this is, um, and I wanted this one because it's a roundabout. So we've got Stockdale Enos Roundabout. Construct roundabout at the interchange of State Route 46 and Stockdale in Kern County. Start of construction is going to be in March. So look forward to a roundabout. Or, oh, sorry, 43. Is it, she's got, she had, this Minerva said 46, but she's wrong. Okay, 43. So a lot of stuff is happening. You're going to see lots of construction. Um, March. And then I have an update from John Liu on the Veterans Outreach Program. So the Veterans Outreach Program is a collaboration between Caltrans and Butte County Office of Education to provide employment and job skills for military veterans returning to civilian life and assisting other unemployed veterans. The program is funded by the headquarters, Caltrans Headquarters Maintenance Program, and it began in 2017. District 6 has three veteran crews, one based in Bakersfield and two in Visalia. The veterans crews are an important component of the comprehensive effort to combat, combat litter that inc also includes our Adopt a Highway Program volunteers. The partnership and the partnership with the City of Bakersfield and Bakersfield Homeless Center, parolee crews, and inmate crews. There are 12 workers on the Bakersfield Veterans Crew, with six to eight working on a typical day. Each month, the crew spends one week in Delano and three weeks in Bakersfield. They focus on manual vegetation in the Bakersfield metro area, tumbleweed, and litter removal outside of the metro area. On a typical day, they will remove 150 bags of overgrown weeds and tumbleweeds, litter, and debris to help beautify the community. And I'm done. Awesome. Thank you. I've been notified that we have technical difficulties, and they want to have us stop for five minutes so they can fix it. So, recess. And, that, and that's, I'm glad you did that because I put... Yes. Yes. So in your packet is six 11 by 17 maps. And what this is, is 10-year, what we call the 10-year shop program. So it has all the projects that we have in our 10-year shop, and we map them. And so, and we... Since we had so many, we had to do multiple maps. So we did it by category. So you've got your safety activities, and don't think because it says safety that there's something unsafe there. Because if you'll notice, it's, it's intersection improvements, but if there truly was a safety project, it would be done immediately. We, we don't let those wait. So take some time to look at that, and then um, 
And these are projects that um, we are have a PID on, or a project <coughs> initiation document, or it's in the process, so it's going to be scheduled for one. So you don't have necessarily a lot of information. Plus, it gets too busy, and I'm just trying to give you the basic information. And then if you look, you've got your, uh, there's two pay pages um, on pavement activities, and then there's a call out on the second page for the Bet um, Bakersfield metropolitan area. And then on your third one, it's what we call mobility, bridge, and roadside activities. And we tried to color code it. And then the last one, is, well, not second to the last, is drainage. On the last page, these are projects that are way out, and they're in the last five years of the shop primarily so we don't we haven't started any work they're just placeholders and um, but we do have some just basic information uh, to give you we update these quarterly but they they're not going to change that much um, so I I was comfortable releasing this plus we need to release it because we need to be transparent um, for Craig and for other agencies for us, we feel this is an opportunity for you to see, and because it's in this visual format, instead of this long ex spreadsheet of all these projects, that to look for opportunities. If we're going to be out there doing something, and you have something, let's partner, let's because we can save you money, because we'll administer the contract and do stuff like that, and then whatever you, um, you know, whatever component you might have been thinking about, uh, putting, joining together and partnering, um, like I said, could save. The locals money so if you want to know anything about any of this get a hold of me we can uh, I have my shop manager my PID manager and we can talk about it and, and look for opportunities and that goes for all the agencies so um, take these back to your public works directors your city manager whoever and then um, like I say it, feel free to call me, but we wanted to give you some kind of a visual of the 10-year program. So, and this wouldn't have looked anything like this without SB1. Sure. Mr. Couch. Take a look at the second page. Yes. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a cap, what we call cap M. It's overlay. None of these projects will have capacity because they're shop projects. They're not, yeah, that would be a um, STIP project. So this is strictly from the shop. Any other questions? Oh, sure. In fact, um, our capacity increase for Caltrans is all on 99, and we map that. All, I have current maps on that. I have that readily available because we get requests from CTC. We just got a request from CTC. We get requests, requests from um, our state elected officials. They want to see the money that we're spending on 99. And um, so those are easy. For us, it is. Well, excuse me. We for I and we had we had map 46. We should have that because that hasn't changed too. We've had to do this periodically, so that information is readily available that I can get to. So I can get yeah. Perfect. Thank you, District Nine. Hi again, Ryan here. <coughs> so uh, in your packet, you'll notice our <coughs> monthly update. Uh, things have not changed too much since the last meeting. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of long-range planning yet because we're supposed to get our long-range planning estimates next month for what we call the State Highway System Management Plan. So I figure in the next couple of months this report will probably change considerably with new projects added as well as these continuing. Um, Construction-wise, in our area in Eastern Kern, we're in winter suspension for everything, so not much happening today. Um, I do want to call attention to the back page talking about our Eastern Sierra Freight Study. Um, I believe Dan Anderson, our consultant, was in talking to the TTAC like last month or the month before that. 
And really that feeds into that truck climbing lane we talked about earlier, as well as all the things that are happening on State Route 58, as well as US 395 and State Route 14. Um, a couple of highlights I'd like to say from that study is that we we're expecting that report to be final at the end of February. Um, the estimates right now, projections I should say, truck volumes are anticipated to increase on State Route 58 by 35 percent by the year 2040 and about 25 percent on State Route 14 by 2040. Um, another huge thing we got from this study was the gaps in truck parking and some of you probably noticed that there's trucks parked everywhere and so this study would be really good for all those of you in the eastern part of Kern County to take back to your council your, your county and take a look at your economic development and, and look at truck um, parking areas or even truck stops because there's uh, there's some gaps and uh, I can I can rattle off a few numbers here right now tatchby has got a gap of about 97 Ridgecrest a gap of 99 Boron about 11 Ridgecrest 138 and oh future gaps I'm sorry future gaps Tatchby's 97 Ridgecrest is 138 and Boron's 116 so that number means what that basically you have you don't parking have a hundred you're missing that many parking spaces that we're projecting that you're going to need in that area so anyway just a heads up once that report's done we'll we'll pass it out to the to the board here so you can all have that final report but without anything else if any questions I'm done I have a guy question Mr. Cantor is there a similar report for uh, 99? Oh. On, on something on the that's truck? not on the east side? Yes, on the trucks? Not None? G Gail, I can yeah. help you with that. Oh, thank you. S so Caltrans funded uh, several years ago a study for I-5 and 99 um, that we were uh, involved in obtaining the funds for. And in that, I think it was a freight corridor study, uh, there was either a chapter or a uh, several paragraphs on truck parking in the Central Valley, and I can uh, get that for you. Uh, yeah, Mayor Canton. especially Shafter continues to develop that um, that port. Uh, there, there's there's got to be a, an impact to 99. Yeah, the the, the issue of uh, of 40, truck parking 40. is not unique to the Eastern Sierra. It's an no. issue in the entire country now. Truckers now have to electronically log yeah. uh, their driving hours. It's linked to GPS. Um, you can't cheat yeah, anymore. So they'll have to stop. Uh, so they have to stop. <laughs> yeah. No other questions. The uh, executive director's report. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have uh, about five or six items, quick items, for you this evening. Some of you may have heard, a few of you I've talked to about uh, the great news. Kern Cog received the $17.5 million build grant, which was a competitive federal program for the final piece of widening on Route 46, just west of Lost Hills. Uh, great work by everyone who was involved. I attended a brief ceremony in Washington on December 11th. And next month, our, our workshop will be a full update by, by Caltrans of what has gone on in the last 20 years on 46, what is going on right now, and what will be going on in the next few years with this uh, final uh, piece of funding that we received. Uh, staff uh, attended the Trade Corridor Centennial Ribbon Cutting on December 20th, where um, Chairman Smith uh, gave remarks. Congratulations to the City of Bakersfield on breaking ground on that project. Uh, December 4th, I attended a joint CTC and ARB meeting in Los Angeles. December 5th and 6th, I attended a uh, California Transportation Commission in Riverside. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be attending another California Transportation Commission meeting uh, just northeast of, of Sacramento. And just an early reminder, February 26th, there's a flyer in your um, folders. We'll <coughs> Kern Cog will be hosting a transit symposium um, in Bakersfield, and I'll go into more detail. Subject to any questions you have, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Seeing no questions. Any member statements? Seeing none, I will adjourn this meeting and start the next one. Roll call the same.
Do I read through this public comment again? Are there any public comments? Seeing none. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Motion on consent. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Present. Yes. 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 Fiscal year 2017-18 Kern Council of Government's Financial and Compliance Audit Reports by Ms. Napier. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. Pursuant to California Government Code Section 6505, Kern Cog must provide for an annual financial and compliance audit report by a qualified independent auditor. Kern Cog retained the firm of Brown Armstrong to render the applicable audit services and issue reports for the year into June 30th, 2018. Kern Cog received an unmodified audit with no findings. The audit report has been issued by the, I'm sorry, the audit report has been issued by the tw December 31st, 2018 deadline as required by law. The action that we're asking for is to accept and file the reports and Mr. Ryan Nielsen of Brown Armstrong is here to answer any questions that the board may have. Mr. Nielsen, would you like to give a couple comments? Yeah, certainly. Again, uh, thank you for having me this evening. My name is Ryan Nielsen. I'm a, a certified public accountant and principal with Brown Armstrong Accountancy Corporation. I'm the engagement partner that's responsible for the issuance of the annual financial statement audits. As you know, each year the council's uh, responsible for preparing and producing a set of financial statements for the uh, uh, disclosure to the public, for various stakeholders to use and uh, disseminate the information. Our responsibility is to provide a report on those financial statements um, and, and give an opinion as to whether or not they're in fact accurate. Um, we conduct an audit in accordance with our professional standards and um, do a significant amount of testing to obtain reasonable assurance that those financial statements are in fact accurate and fairly stated in in all material respects. We issued a, a an unmodified or a clean opinion on the financial statements and in addition to the financial statements we conduct a, a single audit that evaluates uh, federal grants that are received uh, by the council as well as compliance with uh, various various other uh, grant requirements and ensuring that there's appropriate internal controls not only over financial reporting but over compliance with, uh, with um, expenditures that uh, are incurred throughout the council. Those reports also received an unmodified or clean opinion which is the highest level of opinion that uh, a CPA can issue on a set of financial statements. So you're to be commended for that. Uh, we did have a uh, short time window at the end of the year to wrap everything up and I want to thank uh, Council's management, Mr. Hakimi and his team, uh, Greg Palomo and uh, the rest of the staff for their assistance in that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Any comments? I'd like to thank staff for uh, doing a good job and having a clean financial statement. Motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Appointment of a community at large member to the Regional Planning Advisory Committee, Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the, of the board. The RPAC bylaws provide for appointment of three at large members representing varied economic, social, and geographic sectors of Kern County. The board received one application for one position on the RPAC. And the application was received from Ted James, 
who is a land use permitting and regulatory <coughs> affairs consultant. Mr. James was originally appointed as a community at large member to the RPAC in February of 2017, and that was for a two year term. He is eligible to reapply. Executive Director Aaron Hakimi reviewed and verified applicant eligibility as required by the RPAC bylaws. The application is now being presented to the Kerncog Board of Directors for appointment of one community at large member to the RPAC. Thank you. I have a motion. Move the appointment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Board appointment to the California Partnership for the San Joaquin Valley. Ms. Snappier. You're going to be tired of me by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, the California Partnership for the San Joaquin Valley provides an organizational framework for collaboration as a way to improve quality of life in the San Joaquin Valley. Appointment to the partnership <coughs> is made by the governor and can take several months and sometimes more than a year. The partnership meets quarterly with the 2019 board meeting scheduled as follows. March 15th, June 21st, September 20th, <coughs> and December 13th. Cheryl Wegman was appointed to the partnership board in July of 2017. And it is the, I've given you three options for action, but the staff is recommending number two, which is to retain Cheryl Wegman as a current representative on the partnership, but submit a list of candidates to the governor for consideration for appointment, appointment to the partnership board of directors. Thank you. Any discussion? Any volunteers? <laughs> may we may we do so as an alternate or does that have to be a primary member? You you're well you're welcome to get back to us on volunteers, but the governor's office uh has specifically asked for at least three volunteers. Um it's if we don't get three volunteers, the, the board could certainly allow uh, Ms. Wegman to continue to serve. But, but I, I think what we're looking for is if we can get at least three volunteers, mm -hmm. we can let uh, Ms. Wegman serve until those three are vetted and maybe eventually appointed. Um, but if, if we don't get at least three volunteers, uh, the governor's office is probably not likely to... Um, take our appointments up very quickly so we're, we're looking for some volunteers subject what, when do you what's the deadline that when you need to have them? there there is is no deadline uh, supervisor okay. okay well I'll make a motion on your recommendation of uh, number option two I know option two yeah so do we need to vote on that first we can and then and then, and then ask for volunteers yeah, your, your proposal is to, we can give you volunteers now or we can give them to you later, to where you want. I don't have any names. Why not? Right. Sure. Yeah, so that's the motion, right, for yes. option two? Yeah. yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approved, item two. <coughs> Got some questions about that? Sure. Does it need to be somebody who's on the Kern Cog board? Can be who, what's the qualifications for this requirements we we've, we've looked into quite a bit they need to be an elected official and the the, the bylaws uh, would prefer that those elected officials come from one of the 11 cities either a mayor or a council member or from uh, the board of supervisors ms wegman is still an elected official but she, but she is not a she's a school board official but she is not a councilwoman or a mayor or board of supervisor through the chair if i may um what is the commitment in terms of uh travel or um do they do they have exactly. their meetings or in sacramento is it multi-day are they are you traveling for several days or uh, one day meetings mayor can too okay. and about f four times a year about four times a year quarterly okay okay mr chair yes uh, as mayor i would like to volunteer for that role be considered for, for one of them. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would like to volunteer too. 
Great. Thank you. We have two. Do we need one more? One more. He moved his hand. <laughs> he raised his finger. <laughs> Sold. Everybody make up one. Okay, we've got two, and uh, maybe we'll get three. Board appointments to CalCog Board of Directors, CalVans Board of Directors, and San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the, of the board. Uh, the Kerncog Board appoints to the CalCog Board of Directors, CalVans Board of Directors, and the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council. CalCog works for and on behalf of regional governments in California. The board meetings are scheduled as follows. Fri Friday, March 15th, and that would be during the leadership forum that is um, scheduled for Yosemite. Uh, Thursday, May 29th, and Thursday, November 7th. A call-in number may be provided, and I say may because at the leadership forum, they may not, it may not be possible to have a call-in number at that, at that area. Sponsor, uh, CalVans, sponsored by the California Van Pool Authority, a public transit agency, Cal CalVans supplies qualified drivers at, with late model vans to drive themselves and others to work or school. Meetings are on the second Thursday of each month at 10 a.m. and a call-in number is provided. <clears throat> the San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council is a 16-member board that consists of two elected officials from each of the eight regional transportation planning agencies in the San Joaquin Valley. Policy council meetings are typically held three times per year in alternating locations in the valley. The meetings are scheduled for 10 a.m. and a call-in number is provided and the next meeting <coughs> is a week from tomorrow. That's all I have. Thank you. A week from tomorrow? And we're looking for volunteers. <laughs> I no, would volunteer, I'll volunteer for Cal Bob Smith. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. For which one? <laughs> uh, there, as our CalCog, it says delegate, but you want him as it's for a board of directors, correct? Yes. That's that's my nomination for our delegate. So it's two per per um, uh, agency, right? Oh. So there's no one currently on the San Joaquin Regional Policy Council? Cher Cheryl Wegman was our representative, and I, I believe Jennifer Wood um, well. on CalVans, it was Cheryl and Jennifer Wood was the alternate. Hmm. A volunteer for the San Joaquin uh, Valley, uh, the, the Valley um, Regional Policy Council. Okay. Done that before, I can I'll do that again. Do you need an alternate on the CalCog? Um, sh it, it's always helpful to have an alternate. I'll volunteer as the alternate. Okay. Unless somebody else wants to do it. Okay, so we got two covered uh, Cal vans. Anybody? I'll volunteer. Great, thank you. Okay, I think we're covered. So, I'll Mr. Chair. I'll move. Yes. Uh, I'd like to volunteer um, as alternate for the San Joaquin Regional Policy Council. Great. If that was. Available. That's Thank available, you. right? Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It's always helpful to have an alternate. <laughs> and I will um, get that information for that meeting for out to you um, tomorrow. In fact, I think I gave, I've got one copy here. I can make a copy before Okay, you leave. Leave. okay. sure. Thank you. We need a motion and a vote. Yeah, I told Need a motion? Yes. Second. I'll second it. I, yeah, okay. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Phil did. Who? Or did Phil move it? Oh. I did, but someone else did too. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, I am going to skip over item eight and come back to it. And. Go to item <laughs> 11, <laughs> potential cooperative agreement with the California Highway Patrol for additional safety-related enforcement during inclement weather. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Staff has been researching the idea of providing enforcement dollars to the California Highway Patrol for additional safety-related enforcement during inclement weather. 
Staff contacted the California Highway Patrol and learned that the state is broken up into divisions that oversee offices within those divisions. For example, the CHP Central Division that is based in Fresno um, covers Bakersfield, Tohon, Madera, Merced, Visalia, Sonora, Fresno, Mariposa, Los Banos, Porterville, Buttonwillow, Hanford, Oakhurst, Modesto, and Kalinga. The CHP Divi Inland Division based in San Bernardino includes Bridgeport, Needles, Victorville, Victorville, Arrowhead, Bishop, Barstow, Rancho Cucamonga, Morongo Basin, Mojave, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Um, we contacted CHP headquarters and were advised that in order to provide this type of service, the Kern Motor State Authority could have agreements with each of the offices that cover mountain regions in Kern County, such as Bakersfield and Tahoe. Additionally, um, we could negotiate agreements with the divisions of the CHP that have offices that cover all of Kern County. With the if we had um, agreements with the divisions, this would include the desert region of Kern County. And we are just asking for staff direction at this time, whether you want us to continue down this road or not. And Mr. Akimi can answer any questions, I believe. <laughs> any comments? Mr. Maggard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Akimi, what do you think is the uh, the viability of this and if we were to make a contribution would it negatively affect the remaining funds or are there sufficient funds that it, it wouldn't be a problem uh, Super supervisor maggard uh, as as you know and the rest of the board knows we we took down the call boxes uh, about two years ago this fiscal year we bought um, changeable message signs for all of the cities and the county our plan was to do another round of those purchases this fiscal year uh, we do have enough money coming in we collect one dollar from each registration fee uh, to cover in my estimation about a twenty five thousand dollar contribution to the CHP I would suggest we do it evenly throughout uh, the county and um, I'll, I'll also add that uh, supervisor couch was uh, was the one who started this program when he had Fraser Park and what we would we would we would cover the entire county instead of just uh, Fraser Park if mm -hmm. if you were to give us that direction I think we would benefit from the additional focused enforcement and I would um, move that we direct staff to allocate the 25,000 and thank you for your recommendation second all in favor Aye. Aye. that is approved now I will go back to Item 8, Kern Cog 101, Introduction to Kern Council of Governments. Mr. Rob Ball. Uh, that looks like the computer's locked up, so it's, I'm going to have to reboot or do something here to get it going. Uh, we can, can we come back to it as soon as I'm up and running? And okay, or, I or will. Or next month. Or I've next month. I've skipped it already, so we'll uh, <laughs> go to executive director's report. We'll, we'll come back to that next month, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening again, Mr. You'll be talking Chairman. to yourself. <laughs> uh, ju just yesterday, uh, staff met with Caltrans headquarters, both District 9, District 6, and the Federal Highway Administration. It was our annual OWP meeting that went well. Um, Friday, January 25th, as Ms. Napier mentioned, um, at 10 a.m. is the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council meeting that will be in Fresno. I will be attending. Um, Mayor Cantu or um, Council Member Garcia, if, if you want to carpool, please let me know. The KCAC dinner um, this month is January 28th. Wasco will be hosting. 
January 28th at 5.30 at, uh, in Wasco. I think it's their Veterans Hall or Community Building. Uh, the California Transportation Planning Conference this year is scheduled for February 25th to 27th in San Diego. We will likely be sending one or two staff members. If any of you are interested, please let me know. The oh, this is very. This next item is important. Regional awards dinner. Con first of all, congratulations to all the recipients in your areas, both uh, Cheryl Wegman and Jennifer Wood are recipients, as well as uh, numerous other people. The dinner will be March seventh, twenty nineteen. Reservations are due by March fourth. We already have over 40 reservations and we're capped at uh, 250 and we usually reach that cap at least a week or two beforehand. So please get your RSVPs in early. March 13th and 14th, CTC is meeting in Los Angeles. I will be attending. Ms. Mm -hmm. Napier also mentioned March 14th to 17th, uh, CalCOG Leadership Forum will be held in Yosemite this year. Please let me know if you'd like to attend that. Um, Two more quick items for those of you that uh, have returned to the COG and uh, like uh, Council Member Lisenovich or who are new to the COG, we need your Form 700s immediately mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't given them to us already. For everyone else who is returning, we need your Form 700s by April, sec April 2nd of this year. In your folders this evening, <coughs> is a casual schedule of cash disbursements for December, a flyer for the regional awards, outreach efforts uh, throughout the county, rather extensive list, timeline covering the next five or six months. Um, for those of you that are new uh, or returning to the COG, a Federal Highway Administration guide to transportation uh, decision making about about what MPOs are, why they are here, what they do, transportation funding in California, Caltrans document, a refresher for all of you as well as the new members on transportation conformity, the uh, 11 by 17 maps that Gail provided, and the eastern current projects that Ryan provided. Subject to any of your questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Oh, and some of those uh, documents that I mentioned that were in your folder uh, may be on the table there. We didn't print out the, uh, the uh, reference documents for everyone. Thank you. Any member statements? Seeing none. Meeting adjourned. All right.